We have a big coronal hole, some dark regions on the sun's far side, and some aurora and meteors to ring in the new year. Those stories and more in the news this week. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville.edu slash swen. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Space weather this week has definitely picked up an activity. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we've actually been watching quite a few solar storm launches. Not all that much, though, has been Earth-directed. In fact, back on the 24th, we saw this big filament erupt. Whoosh! That thing goes northward of Earth. This one here that we get a big filament eruption down in this region. Bam! Right there. You get that. That's going south of Earth. Then we go over to the east limb in a region that wasn't even in view yet. Bam! Fires another solar storm. Again, nothing is Earth-directed. Finally, we get a couple poofs here in mid-disc. These are finally launching Earth-directed mini solar storms, but they're really not all that big a deal. In fact, really where we're going to get some decent activity is from this finger-like coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone here over the next well, three days or so. The nice thing is that this is going to give us some potentially some aurora of over New Year's. And as we continue to watch this filament up here in the north, we're going to see it begin to destabilize. So this filament also looks like it could be launching as a solar storm. Likely this one is going to go northwest of Earth, but the tail end of it here might actually enhance that fast solar wind and the disturbance that we see at Earth. So either way, we're definitely going to get some aurora at Earth over New Year's, but whether or not it just bumps us to active conditions or possibly minor storm conditions could be enhanced by this region here. Either way, Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you're definitely going to get a show. And Aurora photographers at mid-latitudes, well, hang on because we might get some good shows for you down there too. Now, switching to our far-sighted sun, we can no longer use Stereo A to get far-sighted images because Stereo A is looking at the front side of the sun just like we are. So we have to do simulated far-sighted sun images uh, using HMI and AIA imagery of about two weeks ago to kind of see what active regions might be lurking on the sun's far side and whether or not they're growing. In fact, as we watch these regions rotate across, this should be a cluster that's very familiar to you right now. Uh, region 3514, about two weeks ago, fired that big X-class flare as it began to leave the west limb of the sun. And as we pull up the JSOC HMI helioseismology far-sided viewer, you can see that cluster of regions here in the gray. This is the front side of the sun, but as they begin to rotate to the sun's far side, sure enough, you can see region 3514 that is beginning to grow continues to grow on the sun's far side. You can see this big dark cluster. In fact, it also looks like region 3513 and possibly other regions as well are beginning to really grow. So these regions are active on the sun's far side. They're likely firing big solar flares. We can't really tell, of course, but we have seen some big solar storm launches from the sun's far side and it's likely because of this cluster. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders expect to get uh, radio blackouts to kind of rise again here over the next maybe three to four days as this cluster of regions rotates back into Earth view. And, amateur, and, and aurora photographers, well, we could definitely have some more solar storms being launched from this region. Also, as we take a look, we can see region 3519 and region 3527 also are growing on the sun's far side. You can see region 3519 here as it rotates across the disk of two weeks ago. And then you can see region 3527 as it began to grow as it rotated to the sun's west limb. So these regions definitely are showing a little extra energy here and are definitely continuing to grow. So they may be ones to watch it well as well. So next week may be even a bigger show than what we have this week. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon 
And by the 6th, the moon will still be about 28% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, like maybe some aurora on New Year's Eve, or possibly the peak of the Quadrantids meteor shower on the 4th, you're going to have this bright companion. So you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Now, switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that fast solar wind from that coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth's strike zone. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting minor storm conditions of right around the 1st, with up to about a 50% chance of major storm conditions, and this could easily last through the first end of the second before things begin to calm down. Of course, we also have that potential filament eruption that could cause a little extra enhancement of, and, and possibly a longer period of time where we'd be seeing aurora. But this is good news for your war photographers at high latitudes. You definitely could get a show over the holiday. Now, at mid latitudes, well, we're only expecting active conditions, but we do have up to about a 20% chance of minor storm conditions on the first, possibly in to the second before things begin to settle down. Although, you know, at mid latitudes, if you're an aurora chaser, you better be dedicated to chase because the, uh, the shows may be a bit more fleeting at mid latitudes. Now, switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we do have a lot of active regions in Earth view, and this is why we are sitting with a solar flux staying around the mid 140s. This means good radio propagation on Earth's day side. And on top of that, we also have only minor noise on the bands right now. Now, this is only going to last for a few days until some of these bigger regions are going to rotate into Earth view in about three to four days. But that does mean that we are keeping our risk for radio blackouts reasonably low. NOAA is giving us about a 15% chance of R1 to R2 level radio blackouts over the next three days and only about a 1% chance of an R3 level radio blackout. That's very good. But expect again that that's going to, the noise is going to creep up, the solar flux is going to creep up, and the risk for radio blackouts is going to creep up as we crawl into the new year because of those new regions that we've are that we've been seeing growing on the sun's far side. They're likely big flare players and they are have a big possibility for big solar storms. Now, switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week, everything is in the green this week. We are sitting at the D1 normal range for you aviators. This is at flight level 360. We're also sitting at the S0 quiet level. That's what it is for everyone else. And NOAA is only giving us about a 1% chance of an S1 to S2 radiation storm. And this is because most of the regions that we have in Earth view are pretty quiet. Now, granted, the risk for radiation storms will likely rise just a little bit as we move into the new year because of those new regions. But for all practical purposes over this week, everything should be in the clear. So you frequent flyers, and this includes air crew and high risk passengers, you're all in the green this week. So the space weather this week is definitely getting more active. We have a coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone and sending us some fast solar wind. So aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you definitely could get a decent aurora show over the New Year's uh, holiday. Plus, it might even continue through the second before things calm down. Aurora photographers at mid latitudes, well, it might be a little bit harder to get uh, long lasting shows, but if you're dedicated and you love the idea of getting nature's blessing to start off 2024, it's definitely worth a look. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, we don't have a lot of active regions in Earth view that are big flare players. So that means that the noise on the bands has gone down a bit. And it also means that we don't have the big risk for radio blackouts, but be aware that's only going to last for another maybe three to four days because we have those new regions that are going to rotate into Earth view and likely they're going to raise not just the solar flux, but also the noise on the bands and also the uh, risk for radio blackouts. OK, so just deal with that and just enjoy the this little bit of quiet time while you have it. And now you GPS users, well, you know, things aren't too bad for you right now. The solar flux is staying down a little bit and we don't have any big solar storms. We do have that fast solar wind that's going to be hitting in the next few days. So as long as you stay away from the dawn dust terminators and away from Aurora, your GPS uh, reception should be pretty good. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.